communications officer within the ranks of the Vermont and is based on the information provided in Eric Johnson's closing name. This man was very much ordinary in many ways, yet in fear of self-preservation, aided in perpetuating the terror of the Third Reich. The story of Walter Sanders begins in 1920 in the city of Freudigen, Germany, just outside of Krefeld. He grew up in a multi-religious household, being that his mother was a devout Catholic and his father a stern Protestant neither of which were supporters of the Third Reich, and were friends with Jewish families there. Walter himself had a Jewish best friend growing up, who fortunately escaped to England in 1938. After enrolling in gymnasium in 1930, he joined New Deutschland. And following his dissolution in 1933, he became a member of the Hitler Youth, stating that he had to do this, that it was a good tour. and at the age of 18 in 1938, he became a member of the National Socialist Motor Vehicle Corps, also known as the NSKK. For him, it was a great experience that had little to do with the National Socialism at the time, in that it was just to meet twice a month with his buddies to grab a train. Despite his involvement with nationalistic parties like the Hitler Yuma and the NSKK, Walter continually managed to avoid joining the National Nazi Party. Walter's exposure to the brutality of the Third Reich began at an early age when his friend's father, who really hung himself, had the thought of what was to come in 1934. A later experience he had was with a family friend and the infamous Crystal Knot. He witnessed the owner of this destroyed corner shop cleaning up the shattered glass and windows in the street while gone in his suit and World War I which had apparently caused the SMN president to about face and shame. His exposure also involved propaganda in such media outlets as the Ruby paper, Der Schwimmer, and the mandatory gymnasium belt, Juices. Walter Sanders was no foreigner to the brutal 
extended the Nazi regime. He had experienced firsthand the pogroms in Russia, and in one case had observed SS men walking alongside Jews and then throwing them one by one down the abandoned mine shaft while still alive. I said to myself then and there, if there is a God, then this is going to come back. The Walter had experienced on the Eastern Front had left him shocked at the treatment of Eastern European Jews. They were basically still the real Jews running around with those captains in their little locks of hair. It was not a pleasant sight. Let us say, it was a sight that was foreign to us. They were driven like livestock, and whoever wasn't able to go on was beaten with truncheons and shot. And then later, a couple wagons would come by and pick them up and take them away. It was terrible. This was often the extent of his involvement with the SS. He would go on to describe the SS as kind of people unto themselves. They were brutal. They were deployed behind the lines to carry out man hunts, only to catch Jews. That was beyond our comprehension. Was built by hate, but paved with indifference. Ian Kershaw. 